Boy, do I love video games. And I love history, which means I really love video games based on actual history. So today I am proud to announce a brand new segment entitled Fact or Fiction. Jeez, could that be any more generic? Anyway, in these episodes, I'll be highlighting a game based on history, teach you a little bit about the actual history, and see if the developers got it right or wrong. I've done a few episodes like this in the past with Genji, Dawn of the Samurai, and Oregon Trail, so I figured, why not make it an official segment? While you were in high school or college, chances are you had to read the epic poem Dante's Inferno, which takes you through the nine circles of hell with Dante and his guide, Virgil. Well, back in 2010, developer Visceral Games decided to make a game not only based on the poem, but on the Third Crusades of the 12th century. So how accurate is it? Well, let's take a look. Dante's Inferno is an action-adventure game that was first released back in 2010 for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. You play as Dante, a Templar knight during the Third Crusade in the 12th century, who has committed numerous atrocities. After escaping death, literally, he returns home to find his wife, Beatrice, murdered. Her soul appears but is quickly dragged into hell. Dante, with the help of the spirit Virgil, must go through the nine circles of hell to rescue Beatrice, while being constantly reminded of the horrible things he did during the crusade. Right off the bat, I love the story. It's an adaptation of the classic poem Inferno by Dante Alighieri. More on that later. The important thing is, how's the game? Dante's Inferno is a good game. I really don't have too many bad things to say about it. Many people just call it a God of War ripoff, and yeah, I guess I can see that. But you know what? It's still a good game. First, the visuals. Very, very impressive. The developers were able to visualize hell as described in the poem Inferno. They did a fantastic job. Some images disturbed me at times, while others left me impressed by how accurate they were to the poem. The graphics are dark, twisted, and beautiful. The sound is also great. Everything from the sound effects to the epic soundtrack, it just fits the game perfectly. It's obvious the production values were high for this game. The developers really did a good job making the player feel like they were in hell. The game is an action hack and slash, but has additional features that make it more than just another game. There is standard button mashing, but you can upgrade Dante and learn a variety of moves. Throughout the game, you have opportunities to gain holy or unholy experience, which can increase your levels. The higher the levels, the more moves you can unlock and learn. You learn these new moves and abilities by collecting souls throughout the game, either by killing enemies or just finding them. There are also relics you can gather and equip to Dante, making him more powerful. It was fun finding all of the different relics and seeing all the new abilities I could learn. It ensures you won't just be pressing the X button over and over again. Probably the most interesting part of the game are all of the references to the poem and the scattered historical figures throughout. During your adventure, you'll encounter the souls of different historical figures who have been sent to hell, including Mark Antony and Electra. After a brief summary of their sins, you can choose to punish them and earn unholy experience, or absolve them and gain holy experience. The game isn't perfect though. Sometimes the level design feels kinda lazy. You go in a room, kill everyone, get out. Then you go in another room, kill everyone, get out. There's also a mini game you play when you absolve someone that just totally kills the tempo of the game. I really enjoyed Dante's Inferno, but does it do a good job incorporating history in literature? Actually, Yes! Dante is a Templar Knight during the Third Crusade. The Third Crusade began when Saladin, the Sultan of Egypt, captured the holy city of Jerusalem. The news spread west to King Richard of England, who teamed up with King Philip Augustus of France and Emperor Barbarossa of Germany to reclaim the Holy Land. The game takes place during the Siege of Acre, one of the deadliest battles of the Crusade. The game mentions a group of prisoners that Dante is ordered to protect, 
as King Richard is holding them hostage so he can make a deal with Saladin. They are eventually ordered to be executed. During the Crusades, this event actually occurred. King Richard had 2,700 Muslim prisoners he was holding hostage in exchange for money. Saladin agreed to pay for them, but in payments. After Richard felt the process was taking too long, he ordered all prisoners to be executed. Dante's Inferno is also based on the epic poem Inferno. In the poem, the character of Dante is led through hell by the spirit of Virgil, a Roman poet. The epic poem is considered a classic and is on most required reading lists in high school or college. The game does modify a few elements. One example is the character Beatrice. In the game, she's your wife whom you must rescue. In the poem, Beatrice is the one who sends Virgil to help Dante through hell. The real-life author, Dante Alighieri, was in love with a woman named Beatrice Portinari, and she was a huge influence in many of his works. The best part is how the developers match the description of hell in the poem to the game. Many of the characters from the poem make an appearance. One example is King Minos, who guards the second circle of hell and decides the fate of souls. You have to fight him as a boss to get to the second circle in the game. If you have read the book, the amount of details the developers got right is impressive. They even threw in quotes from the poem when you die. Overall, Dante's Inferno is a great game that I can't recommend enough. I had a blast playing it and catching all of the references to the epic poem Inferno. Visceral Games did an amazing job here, and I hope they eventually make that rumored sequel. That's all for this episode of The Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching. 